Flash, Vertical Velocity at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom is an intimate impulse coaster. This ride has a really weird history, and it's also an interesting ride in general, so today we're going to break it down. Let's start with the history and some of the basics. This ride originally opened in 2001 as Vertical Velocity. When V2 opened, it was the traditional intimate impulse coaster with spikes on both sides, one of them featuring a twist, the other not featuring a twist. That being said, you may notice that V2 now only features one vertical spike instead of two, so what's the reason for that? So, fun story, Vallejo is a 150 foot height limit, meaning Six Flags Discovery Kingdom can't build coasters over that height. But Six Flags went ahead and built this ride anyway. The spikes were 186 feet tall, which is obviously above that height limit. They could have modified this coaster from the very beginning, but instead they lied about its height in press releases stating it was 150 feet tall instead of the actual 186 feet tall. In that same year, 2001, Six Flags Great America received an identical coaster called Vertical Velocity, but they actually said the correct height because there was no height limit getting in their way. That being said, the lie about the coaster's height in California didn't even last a full year. For the start of 2002, this coaster was closed while it was modified. Modification! Modified! Modified! What's that? The front spike, instead of being vertical, was changed to a 45 degree angle featuring an inline twist. Also, while the back spike remained the same as far as the vertical angle was concerned, it was shortened presumably to 150 feet. So that's the story of how V2 at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom got modified. Look at me! I'm modified! Regardless, this is a great example of why lying is a bad idea. Because of that, Six Flags got in a position where they needed to change V2, where they could have just done it from the start. All that being said though, it does make for a unique Intimate Impulse coaster, you're not going to get this same experience on any other Intimate Impulse, which is pretty cool. So let's actually talk about this ride now. Another thing you have to know is that this ride is almost never open. I don't know the reason for this, but we've experienced this in past visits to Discovery Kingdom. In our September 2022 visit, the trains weren't even on the track, so when we saw it testing a few days ago, we jumped at the chance to ride it. Even still, I believe V2 was down a couple of different times during the day, so even if it is operating, it might not be operating all day consistently. Bottom line is, if you walk by this attraction and you see it open, do it immediately because there's no guarantee that you'll have another opportunity. Like a lot of the major coasters at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, this is located to the left of the entrance in the DC Universe section. This is one of four coasters in the area, so if you're a coaster fan, this is probably the area you should go first because they also have a couple low capacity rides there like Superman and Batman, plus Joker's the most popular ride, but anyways. Getting back to vertical velocity, during my visit a few days ago, the line was almost non-existent all day. That being said, a lot of the lines in the park were under 20 minutes, so it wasn't a very busy day at all. On a busy day, I'm not sure how busy this line gets, but it is worth noting that this ride can only operate with one train because of the fact that it's a shuttle coaster. Said trains have 28 seats each, making for a decent capacity for a shuttle coaster, but still not great. Another fan I found interesting was looking at RCDB, they estimated that the version at Discovery Kingdom could have 900 riders per hour, but the version in Illinois could have 1100 riders per hour, so I wonder what made that jump. Maybe it's the operations, as this is not a strong suit of Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. One final fan I want to note is the height limit and the height maximum. You have to be 54 inches tall to ride, which makes sense, but they cap it at 75 inches. I assume this is so you don't hit your feet on the platform, but I could be wrong. So if you're a taller person, watch out. But now, I think it's time to get into the ride layout itself. It is pretty simple, but it's a lot of fun. V2 starts with a forward launch. This is not the fastest launch of the ride, but it does have decent kick to it. The LIMs here are also super loud, which I think is funny, but seriously, they screech louder than any other launch I've ever heard in person. This sensation feels pretty much the same in any row. You might get a better view in the front, but now the experience starts differing based off seats. If you're new to front, you're gonna get a moment of incredible hang time on that inversion because you don't go all the way through. Six Flags Discovery Kingdom has a lot of hang time in their park. Superman has a great hang time moment, Joker has a few, but I think this is possibly my favorite. You then shoot back through the station and up the spike. You'll get a little bit of weightlessness here before you free fall back down to the ground. The drop is bigger in the back, but I think in the front, it's almost cooler because you get that unobstructed view of the ground below. Overall though, like the launch, this moment feels pretty similar throughout the entire train. You then hit your technically third launch, which is the fastest, and this is where I presume you reach your top speed. 
I can totally believe that you travel 65 miles an hour here. You didn't rocket through that inversion going all the way through this time. Then you straighten out for a second, pausing just enough for you to rethink your life's choices before you go through the same inversion backwards, which is a really neat sensation and one you don't get on very many roller coasters. This ride isn't rough at all. It's not super smooth, but it's not rough. But if you are going to hit your head on one part, it would probably be going through the inline twist backwards. As I said though, it's a really neat maneuver, and it's very rare on roller coasters to get something like that. This is the only time you'll go fully through and fully back through the inversion. You do go back through the station another time though, reaching your highest point on the spike. You then go through the station one more time forwards, getting another great moment of hang time on that inversion if you're in the front, and that pretty much ends your ride experience. I've alluded to this, but I do think the front of the train is the best seat on V2, for a couple reasons. Number one, that hang time. It's one of the best moments in the park. And number two would be, if you're not terrified by this, the view you get on the spike. I think seeing the ground down below is pretty neat. All seats are fun, and the middle probably gets a little bit of both, but overall, I think the front is the best, because it has the strongest forces. So overall, what would I rate Flash Vertical Velocity at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom? I've decided to give this Intamin Launch Coaster an 8 out of 10. This ride is not complicated, but what it does, it does well. This ride is a lot of fun. I'm still trying to figure out where I want to rank it. It's either going to be number 3 or number 4 in the park, but I'm trying to figure out if it's above or below Superman. Those two are very close for me. Whichever way I place it, V2 is a fantastic roller coaster, even if it is one of the more simple thrill coasters I've been on. So should you ride Vertical Velocity when you're at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom? Absolutely. It's a great time. Assuming it's open, that is.